Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,579. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and so excited to share with you today a very special guest by the name of Lou Barletta. He's calling in from beautiful Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Lou Barletta is a filmmaker who's been a Porsche car enthusiast since the early 80s. Film has inspired his love for cars. Movies, including The Graduate with Al Pacino, inspired him to purchase a 1986 red Alfa Romeo Spider Graduate model as his very first car. His passion for Porsche started with a test drive in a 944, and he worked at Champion Porsche in South Florida, the largest Porsche dealership in the country, if I'm correct. After viewing the film Big Apple Alpha, Outlaw, starring Magnus Walker, a past two-time guest here on Cars yeah, Lou connected with the video creator and suggested a new project. Then, together, they created Ghost Ride with Big Old Apple Outlaws creator JP. By the way, JP is going to be a guest on this podcast tomorrow, which is a soon-to-be-released music video-style passion project that showcases Lou's 1979 Porsche 911 SC. I've got a sneak peek at this. It is very cool. He got casted as an extra in the film The Irishman. Of course, that film starred Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and Joe Pesci, which was a dream come true for Lou. That must have been fun. And we will have fun learning more about this project in just a minute. But first, a word from our valued sponsors that make Cars yeah possible. So buckle up, sit tight. We're going to have a fun ride today here on Cars yeah, and we'll be right back. Did you know Covercraft is much more than car covers? They offer protection for the inside of your vehicles too. Sunscreens to keep your vehicles cool and protected from the sun's damaging UV rays. Dash pads that do the same so your dash stays looking new without all those ugly cracks and fading. The seat covers that are easily removed for washing are awesome, but it's their custom fit floor mats that I really love. Is your vehicle getting a little long in tooth? Well, there's no better way to give it a new car look than with a custom fit floor mat and trunk mat. I replace mine every few years with something a little different, contrasting, just to have some fun. It stops that urge to buy a new car, and more importantly, it protects the factory carpets, so when it's time to sell your vehicle, it looks brand new. They're easy to clean, they secure to the floor for safety, and they look oh so good. Don't forget your trunk, too. Custom fit trunk liners for sedans, coupes, and SUVs are perfect protection for the factory carpets from all those things that can stain and damage the floor of your vehicles. Check out Covercraft.com for a huge number of styles, colors, and options that'll make you smile. And I've got a deal for you. If you use the code YAH120, that's Y-E-A-H-120 at Covercraft.com, you get 10% off your Covercraft order. So go to Covercraft.com today and use the code ya 120 at checkout. Tell them Mark sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Covercraft. They've got you covered. So what do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 podiums, multiple Daytona wins, and a win at Le Mans? Well, if you're a racer and the Racers Group team owner, Kevin Buckler, you start Adobe Road Winery. It's located in Petaluma, California, and he and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series, four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own. Like racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, wrapped in a whole lot of fun. You can choose from four blends titled Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today, I'm going to talk about Shift. This wine was awarded 93 points by Robert Parker's Wine Advocate. It's balanced and spicy with dark blueberries and a cigar aroma. The unique bottle shape features a vintage-inspired metal gated shift back with carbon fiber, and the cork is topped with a five-speed shift knob. That's right. There's going to be some battles at the dinner table on who gets to keep the cork after this bottle has been enjoyed. The Racing Series is a delicious gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life. 
and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARS, yeah, all one word in caps, at checkout, you get $10 off any purchase of the wines from the racing series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly right at your door. Use the code CARS, yeah, at checkout and get $10 off your purchase from the racing series today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the racing series. Go to adoberoadwines.com and use the code CARS, yeah, today. Cheers. Hey, Lou, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Mark. You bet. We're going to have some fun today. Now, before I jump into some of the questions, I want to ask you this. What do most people not know about you? That's a good question. I would say that it's been my passion for film and creative arts. I think that a lot of people just until recently have discovered that. I've always kind of kept that to myself, uh-huh. but uh, with the world of social media, folks are allowed to, you know, freely more express themselves. Uh, and I think that people have now starting to learn that I have a strong desire for film and uh, the creative arts. Well, it's so cool these days because we have all these outlets that we can put this creative work onto. And in fact, last year I had 13 episodes of a Cars Yet television show that I produced and put together. If you'd ever taught me or told me I was going to do something like that, I would have laughed at you because they always (laughs) told me I have a face for podcasting. That's great. But, you know, there's all these new ways to do this. And and even podcasting uh, 10 years ago was pretty much an outlier. Like, what is that? So I think it's great that this is bringing the inner creativity of people out. We're going to learn a lot more about your creative side and this film you've done and what you want to do. But first, I'm going to ask you this. I'd love for you to share a mantra or some kind of success quote or a saying that has some meaning for you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires smoking here on Cars. Yeah. So Lou, I know you love to drive. Grab the wheel. All right. So one that I favor that I also incorporated into the uh, video is one by Ferry Porsche, actually where he says, we all have a desire to create something that will show we were here. Mm. Time is one of the few things man cannot influence. It gives us a beginning and an end. This makes us question what comes in between. I love that. You know, I think I've seen that on one of their advertisements or something. I mean, I'm my listeners know I'm a big time Porsche fanatic, have been my whole life. What does that quote mean for you and the projects that you want to work on in your life? <sighs> Good question. I always look to create things. I mean, like the quote says, right? We all have this burning burning desire to create something that will sort of show we were here, leave a mark. Mm -hmm. And I I truly believe that, you know, whether it be with my photography or uh, my filmmaking, um, being creative, I'm always trying to use my time to do something creative. Porsche is such an iconic brand, and it's one of those brands that have been around for a long, long time. And I think about the original Ferry Porsche talking about his favorite Porsche is the next one, that he's never happy. He always wants to keep improving, and that's a lot like creative people. They always want to keep improving themselves and, and, exactly. and making the, a mark in life. So let's talk a little bit about your career path. I'd love for you to share with us more about what gets you excited and fired up when you wake up in the morning, and also touch on uh, this film that you've made, and when we can uh, release this, maybe by the time this air this show airs, I can put a link to that show if you're ready to do that, but when it is, I'll definitely do that. What gets you excited and get you out of bed bright and early every morning to go out and create? Well, along with my passion for Porsche, you know, my career is is also as a fitness professional. And currently at the moment, I'm really looking forward to having some of the restrictions lifted due to COVID-19. Yeah, exactly. So at this point right now, I'm really looking forward to getting up out of bed and seeing my clients more so face-to-face than, say, via Zoom. Yeah. And being able to more freely move around to be more creative. You know, during this whole COVID thing, you know, I had this idea to shoot this video given the fact that we were sort of under a stay-at-home restriction during certain times. But I really took advantage of the streets of Manhattan and how empty they were and being able to film so freely, Mm -hmm. you know, typically whenever you're doing something on the streets of Manhattan involving a vehicle, there's tons of traffic and 
it requires lots of people to get that shot. And JP and I freely got some amazing shots on some of the most iconic bridges in uh, New York City on maybe two to three takes. Wow. So we used, you know, the COVID situation to our benefit Mm -hmm. with creating this project. And it just, you know, to look back now, two, three weeks ago, um, the city was very peaceful. I mean, as compared to what's going on just this past weekend, uh, but two, three weeks ago, the city was peaceful. Not many people on the streets, not many people walking, driving. And, uh, you know, we had a ball just being able to film. Yeah, I got a sneak peek at this, and that was one of the first things that struck me. I have some friends up here in the Pacific Northwest that have been doing that with Seattle. Now, Seattle's typically a very busy city, and they've been going out with some of their luxury supercars, classic cars, and getting some pictures of their cars in settings in the city that you you never may never get again because they're empty. And it's kind of like when Magnus Walker had his first video shot that kind of put him on the map, you know, doing that at night when there wasn't much traffic, but there was still traffic, but watching what you guys shot. Yeah. It's like a Hollywood major production where they shut down entire city blocks. And I know you couldn't do that. And I just went, wow, they use this time to your benefit. And, And I want to touch on that because I've been asking a lot of my guests, how has this COVID situation affected your life and your business? And for the most part, it's been a Huge challenge for everybody. However, we as human beings are very creative people and innovative people. And we've used this to our benefit. Like you said, you can do fitness training, uh, Zoom with your clients. It's better to be face-to-face, but at least you can still do it. I've been involved in a virtual wine tasting weeks ago. If you told me I was going to be hosting a virtual wine tasting with uh, <laughs> Adobe Road Winery and their Racing Series wines, uh, you know, back in March or February, I would have said, what's a virtual wine tasting? How do you do that? So we've been pretty clever, I think, as people and especially as as creative people to do that kind of thing. So you guys went out and used this to your advantage to create a spectacular setting. Let me ask you this about that film. The first film that JP did, and I know I'll be having him as a guest tomorrow, but I noticed that he was not in a Porsche. And Magnus is known for Porsches. Now, you have a Porsche that you're very fond of. So uh, my understanding is you reached out to JP and said, I've got a cooler car than that. Why don't we do something together? Right. So, it, you know, the, the whole project was supposed to be a 60 to 90 second, a little short clip to put across my social media and we shot over a period of three days. Oh, wow. And we, sh- we overshot footage. And the story of just me driving turned into something more. So it was orig- originally always planned to do it to, a, uh, to some music mm-hmm. that was produced by a recording artist that's based out of Ireland that goes by the name of The Outsider. And... I became friends with him over social media about three years ago when he, when I stumbled upon his music on Spotify, reached out to him, and we've always stayed in contact. And when he released this new album, the first single on the new album really struck me. And I said, you know, I can definitely do see a music video of sorts with a Porsche in it. And I wrote to him asking for his permission. He went to his label and they gave, granted me permission to use the music in the video. And then I, I took it a step further and I said, you know, wouldn't it be cool to actually get some opening shots in James Dean's actual Upper West Side apartment? Oh, cool. And I actually know the gentleman who's been living in James Dean's apartment uh, that he held in 1953 to ni- uh, 1954 to, to his death, 1955. And... He gave me permission to come up and the shots in the opening of the video are actually in the apartment of James Dean's apartment. How cool. Yeah. And, you know, it just I felt like it fit. You know, James Dean was also a Porsche enthusiast, you know, having owned two of them and, you know, uh, coming to his death and the, the 550 Spider. I wanted to sort of pay homage to him. So we did some shots in his apartment and then took the vehicle out and sort of also turned the video more or less than just me driving around the streets of Manhattan. We, I introduced uh, two other characters in the video 
to sort of portray being a couple. Mm -hmm. So the premise of the video basically is, you know, uh, a guy just going out, maybe dealing with a breakup or whatever, and flashing back to an ex and coming into coming at peace with himself and being in his car and just driving, seeing them cross, you know, the street and everything. And uh, it, it just seemed to work. Yeah, I really found it fascinating. And I, I sensed, you know, I, I first looked at it because, OK, it's got a Porsche in it. I love Porsches. Right. But there's a, this other mystery story going on here that's like, OK, who is that woman and what's going on and what's what's happening here? It left me really with questions going, OK, what's next? Is there something coming or where are we going with this? And and that's what I found that for me, the mystery side of it a bit. Of, right. OK, what's going on here? And uh, maybe there's another issue coming out in the future. Did you have that idea that there might be something yes. coming? So the intention was and that's why we overshot, too. So we we shot a lot of footage. And, you know, the artist that lent me the music to the video has a lot of other great songs. Mm that I also wanted to put to film with the car. And the intention is to do another project to kind of pick up um, sort of like, you know, to be continued. Yeah. Where does he go next? Oh, right? good. Well, I'm excited to buy that because you did an excellent job with that. I, I, I found it really cool. And the fact that you were able to produce what you did in just three days, because I've shot before and I realized how much time and effort this takes. But of course, yeah. again, you used empty streets to your advantage in a really, really nice way. So bravo. Yes. Now, let me ask you this. We're recording this show on the 2nd of June. It came, comes out on the 17th. By the time it, this show airs for my listeners, can they have a link to go watch the film or is it absolutely oh okay yeah good. so the, the tentative plan right now is to release it next monday on uh, june 8th okay so we've put out a few teasers just to some media folks right now uh and uh, the teasers have gone out, out on social media right now nice and the video will be fully released uh tentatively right now monday awesome. uh june 8th so by the time the uh the podcast airs. Yes, it'll it'll be out there and I'll provide you a link with it. Well, there you go, listeners. If you haven't already seen it, I'll make sure there's links on Lou's show notes page and the Cars yeah website. You can go there and link to it and enjoy this and uh, be as intrigued as I am. Well, you guys did an awesome job. And I'll remind everybody I'll be talking with JP tomorrow about this film and also about the film he did with Magnus Walker, uh, which you'll be able to learn even more about this collaboration between these two creative gentlemen. What I like to do is ask all my guests for a huge challenge that they faced in their life, something that really caused them to maybe fall back on their heels or have to deal with something. But the most important part of this is, of course, the lesson learned. So I'd love for you to take us on a little journey here, Lou, a time in your life when you were very challenged, maybe in even a big failure. And then tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your life. Absolutely. So I would say, you know, overcoming in my life, overcoming losses of relationships, whether it be dealing with a death or a breakup has always been challenging for me. Mm. But I think through fitness and staying active and especially being creative, um, I've really learned to sort of manage the depression that comes along with these life changing events. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that still, to this day, still drives me to be creative, be active, you know. In dealing with depression, as you said, or with the loss of someone, whether it's a relationship or uh, death, I mean, those are huge emotional challenges. How have you seen exercise and physical activity uh, affect those folks that you help in your primary business get over those things? And how did it help you? So, I mean, it helped me tremendously. Uh, I, for my clients, all I know is that if I'm able to help them just keep up with their children, to <laughs> me, that's is most rewarding. And I think my clients would say the same. So, you know, I, I'm blessed with having that ability to <laughs> help my clients be able to keep up with their kids. When you say keep up with their kids, what do you mean by that? A lot of my clients have younger children, you know, and they're still very active. And some of my clients have uh, had children a little later in their life and okay. maybe just don't move as fast as you know their little ones are, are moving. So helping them spend more quality, good time with their children has been a benefit. 
It's Absolutely. Amazing. So let me ask you this from a, a physical fitness uh, approach. Say, say I become a new client with you and I tell you, no, I don't exercise enough and I sit too much and uh, all I do is go for a walk every day when I can. What would be a real first approach that you would have with me to say, Mark, here's what you need to do. Let's say the first month of becoming a more physically active person. So, so Mark, the first thing I would do, honestly, is I wouldn't even get you to be more active. What we'd look at first is your diet, right? And yeah, look at yeah. what foods are maybe affecting the way, you know, you being able to move, right? right. Maybe you're eating processed foods that are, you know, having you sleep more and, and not be able to have the energy you really need mm. to be able to move. So I think like diet first and foremost, you know, and I always go over that with all my clients. And I think once you start to tackle that and change eating behaviors, mm -hmm. then the physical part just becomes so easy. I mean, you, you just get more, you just get more energy, right? Right. You're intaking quality, good whole foods, your energy levels go up and you just start naturally moving more. You know, it's great advice. I think my challenge is my pantry is 10 steps from my desk. My yeah. wife keeps saying she's going to put a lock on it. Uh, that's probably a good idea because uh, it's easy to go snack. Well, listen, we're going to take a short break. And when we get back, we're going to talk some more about Lou's personal passion that he's had for cars in his life. So uh, stay away from the pantry. Sit tight. And we'll be right back. Let's step away from the conversation and talk about our charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits that are working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through auto-related events, car shows, and drives. Among these nonprofits is Tech Force Foundation, a great organization dedicated to solving the technician shortage that threatens the transportation industry today. By providing career development resources and increasing awareness and enthusiasm for the tech profession, Tech Force is bringing bright young students into the auto, diesel, aviation, marine, motorcycle, motorsports, and restoration worlds. To date, they've awarded more than $10 million in scholarships and grants to tech students. And in times like these, I don't have to tell you how essential those techs are. Keeping our delivery and emergency vehicles running and keeping America rolling. To learn more about Tech Force or to make a donation to this cause, visit www.techforce.org. You'll be glad you did. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read. Whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years and it's filled with valuable articles intelligent write-ups and the latest auction sales go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today and don't miss my weekly podcast with keith martin titled buy sell hold it's the essence of collecting we talk to the movers and shakers in the collector car world here's a couple deals i have for you just for listening here on cars yeah if you use the checkout code cars yeah You'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right. $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yeah for Sports Car Market magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. All right, we're back. I did not go to the pantry while we were gone. I promise you that, Lou. I stayed put. I got my glass of water here, lots of hydration. So let me ask you this. Would you tell me a story that instigated your personal passion for cars? Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew you were going to be a bit of a car guy? Oh, yeah, I, I, think, I think it all came down to my very first job. My very first job was working in this small video store that was renting VHS tapes. So we're going back now, right? VHS. Oh, yeah. VCRs, right? Yeah. So Spanny, uh, I spent a lot of time, you know, when I was growing up watching films and cars and film mostly really appealed to me. 
whether it was James Bond, you know, in an Austin Martin or Al Pacino in an Alfa Romeo, you know, when I saw that graduate, you know, in uh, the graduates, right, the Alfa Romeo, that was for me a pivotal moment. Yeah. And I think that's what really inspired me to you know, have as my first car in 1986, Red Alfa Romeo Spider Graduate. Nice. You know, that movie, of course, iconic classic movie. And I think, and you might be able to answer this, I remember seeing a website somewhere where you could actually go to and plug in a type of car and it would tell you if that car was ever in a movie. Have you ever found a place like that? No, but I, I'm sure it exists. <laughs> Everything's on yeah, the internet. There, yeah. I think it might have been called Movie Time Cars or something like that. I'll go and find that for you listeners and I'll put a link in Lou's show notes page because I found it fascinating. You could type in Porsche or Alfa Romeo or whatever. And it would show you all the films that the cars are in. Uh, even if you plugged in uh, Chuck Barris, it'll show you the cars that he made for the Munsters and right, the Batmobile Batman. and the Monkey right. Mobile and all those kinds of things. Well, let me ask you this. You probably just answered that this next question, and that is your first really special car. Was it that Alfa Romeo? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, the Alfa, you know, I had that car just before I graduated high school. I mean, then. It really stood out on the on the uh, high school lot there, oh, but uh, that little red convertible, uh, you know, it was just a joy to drive. Uh, even up here in the Northeast, I mean, I had a, even a uh, removable hardtop for that vehicle. Oh, nice! And it was just, it was fantastic. Yeah. I, I still miss that car every day. <laughs> yeah, they're really really cool cars. Well, here's a bit of an introspective. I'm gonna climb into your skull a little bit here, Lou. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, you were actually manifest as a vehicle, what would Lou be and why? Simple. Not, the only one that comes to my mind is, and again, this this vehicle here was inspired from a film. And when I first saw it on screen, I said, wow, that's the car I would definitely be. It's a 1961 Ferrari 250 GT California Spider. Ooh, okay. Am I thinking of the same film as a guy named Ferris? You got it, Ferris Bueller. <laughs> I mean, the car is sleek. It's stylish. I mean, it's, yeah, that's <laughs> definitely, that would, that would be me. Well, they're super cool cars. And of course, that movie is so classic in so many ways. And uh, I, I remember that movie that first came out as well going, oh, no, no. Thankfully, all of us now know that wasn't a real one. That right. They, that they crashed. But uh, that <laughs> line when they hand the keys to that valet, don't right. worry, I'm a professional. professional. <laughs> Yeah, everybody who owns a nice car's fear is the valet who's the professional, uh, for sure. Ah, uh, great car. All right, Lou, well, we are entering what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of that California Spider throttle. So here we go. What's a personal habit of yours that you believe has contributed to your successes in life? Being an early riser, 4.30 a.m. daily. Wow, and you're an East Coast guy. I thought East Coast guys don't get up early. Oh, yeah. No, no. I'm up 430. Wow. Even even during this quarantine, I've been up every day. Well, you know, I've had so many very successful guests on the show that that's a secret of theirs. I like to say it's one of mine. Now, I'm not quite as early as you. Typically, I get up between 530 and 6. Um, but, you know, I think that came from years of being a paper boy and an early morning Dawn Patrol mm -hmm. surfer on the West Coast in Southern California. Uh, I still like getting up early. There's so much that can be done when everybody else is sleepy and quiet. Uh, so definitely a successful way to go through life for sure. How about if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased? Who would it be? Uh, yeah, James Dean. Uh, I'm a big James Dean fan. Okay. And why is that? What is it about James Dean that you'd like to, to ask him about life? Well, I, you know, he, we had some things in common, you know, he, I lost my mom at a young age. He lost his mom at a young age. You know, he was misunderstood. I feel at times growing up, I was also misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, definitely would love to trade stories. Well, he definitely had a love for Porsches. You know what I didn't know about him? And I was investigating him a little bit. I think it had to do with one of the Porsches that he raced, the Speedster that he had. He had really, really terrible vision. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people don't think yeah. of that. But yeah, he wore very thick glasses and yes. they didn't have contacts really per se that worked well back then. So he would have to memorize his lines and his movements in a, in a film because he basically couldn't see two feet in front of him. Right. Well, that's why he improvised a lot. You know, he he was all about not following the director's uh, 
quarters, he kind of did his own thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it certainly worked for him, and we certainly lost him way too soon. You kind of wonder mm-hmm. when you lose people that are creative at a young age, what else would we have seen them produce and create exactly. for us to enjoy? So, uh, yeah, very interesting guy, and uh, he had a great choice of cars. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Change your oil <laughs> frequently. <laughs> Pretty simple. Change your oil. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're a Porsche driver, right? I mean, that's it. How about a resource? Is there a resource that you might share yes. for our listeners? Uh, well, if you're a Porsche guy like me, I use Pelican parts. Pelican parts are great. I mean, they just have everything. And their forum is amazing. If you're looking for how-to articles and the community there, post a question. You get an answer in a couple of hours. It's fantastic. The uh, owner of that company sold that company a while back, uh, Wayne Dempsey who was a guest on my show, and um, I'm not sure who owns it now, but I, and I'm not even sure if he's still involved with it, but I have bought some parts for both my BMWs and Porsches. I think they do a really great job, so if any of you missed my talk with Dane Wayne, you can go back and listen to it. Uh, how about a book? Is there a book you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, sure. Into the Wild. Uh-huh. It's a 1996 book by John Krakauer. Yeah. They told the true story of uh, Chris McCandless, the uh, suburban college graduate. Yeah. And uh, it's, I don't know, I, I found the film to be just as uh, enjoyable, the uh, film that was adapted uh, by Sean Penn, you know, uh-huh. Into the Wild. And the music that a lot, that went along with that Eddie Vedder produced for that film was just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Great book. Well, I'll remind our listeners, by the way, you're the only one that's ever recommended that book, which is pretty shocking considering how many people I've had on the show. I've got a place in the Car Show website called Guest Recommended Books, where this book uh, will be listed for quick, easy clicks to buy. And I've got over 1,600 books listed there by my inspiring automotive enthusiasts. You can fill the whole library of inspiration and knowledge with all the great books my guests have recommended. So check it out on the Cars yeah website. All right, Lou, we're coming up to the checkered flag, and I'm going to ask you a question that I like to call a bit of a doozy. I'm going to buy you any cool car today, collector car, something fun that ticks all the boxes. You can't sell it, though. I want you to keep it, so if you're going to fund your next film, it's not going to be with this car. You have to drive it, no garage queens, and mm-hmm. it's the only collector car you can have. So what can I buy you? I will gladly take a 918 spider a 918 oh so you want a newer i thought for sure you'd say that ferrari um mm. well, i'm a little surprised but that's okay because the 918 is an insane insane car Indeed. so yeah tell yeah. our listeners that maybe won't be as familiar with the 918 spider what is it about that car so the 918 right comes with a 4.6 liter v8 but it's backed with two electric motors you know, and you, I mean, you can produce over 800 horsepower. Yeah. You know, ca- the car carries zero to 60, uh, zero to 60 uh, in just uh, under three seconds. Yeah. Uh, top speed of 214. You know, I'm not one of those guys that are all sold yet on this uh, electric vehicles. I still need some raw power. And, <laughs> but this car being a hybrid just yeah. checks all the boxes for me. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, a 918. In due time, will be a very collectible car. They're beautiful cars. I've never had the luxury of riding in one. I've been around one. I've sat in one. I'd love to drive one someday. So that I get the right vehicle, Lou, what color would you like your 918 to be? I'll take it in metallic silver. Silver, the classic German <laughs> colors. Yeah. 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 Maybe uh, I saw a beautiful one that was silver with kind of a terracotta baseball glove orangish leather inside that was just ah, delicious. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. All right, Lou, I'll get to work there. Uh, you taken me on a great ride today. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> I want to thank you for sharing your inspiration with the Cars Yeah listeners. Could you offer us a parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the New York hillsides in that beautiful 918 Spider? Absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're living in crazy times, right? Yeah. Uh, pandemic, racism, protests, riots. Take time to reflect. Yeah. yeah. Do something creative. But most importantly, never give up hope. Yes, absolutely. You know, we're uh, recording this show with Lou the day after these terrible weekend of riots. And yeah, don't give up hope. And you know what? Be nice to other people. Just be kind to people. Everyone's going through a challenge. Be nice and help others. It's really that simple. How can people keep up with you and follow along with everything that you do? Sure. Just follow how Lou lives on uh, Instagram. You'll see some great photography and 
and some short videos of the you know the cars I I have uh, in my collection. Uh, but yeah, at at uh, how Lou lives and, and on Instagram. Yeah, very cool. And I'll make sure to put a link to a ghost ride. Ghost I'm ride. also going to put a link um, uh, up to the Big Apple Outlaw that uh, his buddy did, and we're going to be talking with his buddy tomorrow who produced that film with Magnus Walker. So sit tight and join us tomorrow. Lou, thanks for spending some time with me today and for inspiring others and being positive. I've really enjoyed learning more about what you're up to. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. You're welcome. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.